Hi, Pastor Josh here. All that we do, it first started at a beginning. We all know this, but we often don't admit that it's at the start of any new beginning when we're at our most vulnerable. Quite simply, the reality of that new beginning and our ego, they often don't quite add up. This can leave us feeling debilitated and instead we shy away. We shy away from leaning into that very thing that we wanted to right at the start. We choose not to let people see us at this moment of vulnerability and we suffer for it. When do we first learn this behaviour? Does a baby know this? Do we not start life unable to walk? and unable to talk. How many times must the baby first fall over before it takes those very first steps of independence? And how much of a baby's first conversation is just simply babble? I might be wrong about this. That's okay. But my feeling is that a baby has a desire to want to walk and to want to talk and that desire, it grows. And it comes out in practice, practice, practice. Seemingly to us, it may look like a series of failed attempts. But with each failed attempt, the baby learns and the baby grows. I'm working on reminding myself that despite my age and most certainly despite my ego, Failure doesn't magically stop being a learning experience. What I need is courage. I need courage to show up. I need courage to fall short. I need courage to let other people see me do this. If I'm to have anything of substance, anything of value to offer them, I need the courage to fail. I need to let myself learn. I need to grow. Sometimes, I feel scared to talk. And it's because I'm wary. I'm wary that every time I open my mouth, I simply don't know what I don't know. I long to inspire the love of God in all people. But how can I do this if often I'm going to be wrong? How can I do this when there's so much more to learn? So much I don't know. However, what if we were to think about approaching life as perpetually being childlike? Rather than ever quite thinking we're going to reach some final destination of knowing something quite right enough or doing something quite perfectly enough. Wouldn't that help? Wouldn't that be liberating? This notion is put forward to us in the Bible that we are the children of God. I say reserve this right for yourself. Reserve the right to be childlike. Reserve the right to fall down and get back up again. Reserve the right to babble, even when the appropriate words, they don't quite find you. Put into practice each day the new things you learn, even though you also might not get them right. Seeing ourselves as children allows us to consider just how much we still have to learn, rather than feeling the pressure of having to have every right answer. It encourages us to be open to mystery. And the world's beauty, it's seemingly enhanced as we have this permission to be naive. Remember this, since I am but a child, a right I choose to reserve for myself. In all that I tell you, I might think differently tomorrow, in a year's time, in 10 years time, as I continue to practice, practice, practice what I preach and to fail, fail, fail at it too. And that is okay.